Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Governor Kay Ivey delivers the state of the state. Also, the state is flush with cash. And Mo Brooks has a message for former President Donald Trump. Help me, Mr. Spade. I need help so badly. I have no right to ask you. I know I haven't, but I do ask you. Help me. Ain't too proud to beg. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and today I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, investigative reporter and columnist with APR. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Josh. Hey, how are y'all? So uh, the, the Alabama legislature's back in town. Uh, <laughs> Governor. I thought that I felt less, you know, less wealthy. So. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. It's like we used to say back in the old days, uh, hide your liquor and your women and your money. Lock it up. <laughs> They're coming after more than the liquor and women this time. I can tell you that. Oh, it's an election year. Uh, Governor Ivey gave her state of the state, uh, uh, mostly positive, recounting her uh, accomplishments with the legislature. Uh, it, 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 you know, I think great leaders do accentuate the positive. I do think mm -hmm. that's true. And I, I did see uh, uh, some right wing website go call her uh, Governor Meemaw because she had said one time that blame the unvaccinated. Well, mm -hmm. UAB is blaming the unvaccinated. They, yeah. the people that are sitting in the hospital and uh, around the state are the ones that are sick sick are the unvaccinated, Josh. But, uh, yeah. you know, the Democrats weren't all that pleased with Governor Ivey's uh, state of the state, but they weren't all that displeased. No, uh, you know, I, listen, I, I think that um, everybody, it, it's, it's hard to be very critical right now with a lot of things because there's so much money, uh, you know, and, and much of that is, is due to, to Joe Biden and Democrats uh, at, the, at the federal level sending a lot of cash our way. And so we're flush with cash at this point, uh, you know, and we've, we're uh, not to mention the economy has been fairly good, um, you know, even through the pandemic, the, the economy, especially in Alabama, has been fairly good. And, and we, so we haven't lost a lot of revenue. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that prison plan now that the uh, now that you know Treasury says that we can't use that money. But uh, you know, I, I think that it's hard to be overly critical uh, at a time like this when we have that much money floating around. However, I think we are going to quickly get into some to some issues, and I think Anthony Daniels, when when talk, given the Democratic response to Kay Ivey, he mentioned a lot of those things and how they would like to see that money spent for the betterment of the working class in Alabama. Uh, specifically on health care issues and some other things, you know, maybe we should spend COVID money on COVID. I know that's a crazy idea, uh, but I think that we are very quickly going to run into some problems uh, in the legislature, in the session that's, that started this week. Well, I, I, I you know, and we're going to get all, all into all those issues mm -hmm. right away, but I, I felt I, I came away from the state of the state feeling good in light of where we are. Right. And as far as the governor has tackled some of the tougher issues that we, we've we had in the state for 40 years, really. She has, she has, and she does a great state of the state. I hate that we weren't there this time. I do enjoy watching her deliver the state of the state, but she's, she's really done some accomplishments with our infrastructure and a, a lot of those issues that have been hanging around for a very long yeah. time. Hey, I, I mean, Josh, you were talking about uh, income. Mm -hmm. uh, geez, uh, the state, registered record revenue growth uh, over the, the last year. I mean, student general fund dollars were up 11.4% or $2.56 billion. Uh, that was a pretty big... That's big a huge one. number. Mm -hmm. Education trust fund was up 16.4% to $8.64 billion as well. Yeah. Now, no, I mean, the, I think the, the average growth here you got to understand from 2011 to 2019, 
was just 3.7 percent a year. So these are huge numbers. A lot of, oh. I mean, people are spending money. They're spending yeah, oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, they are. are, and and you know, and, and that you know leads into the to the raises uh, that uh, you know the four percent for state employees, four percent for teachers, and, um, mm -hmm. and and you know I think that uh, that that's something that's needed. Uh, and you look at the chart uh, where you know where teachers start, and especially given uh, where we are right now uh, with the staffing issues in our public schools. Uh, well, uh, public schools and private schools and charter schools, everybody's having problems uh, keeping keeping teachers at this point. Um, you know, it, it's been a mess, and so I think that that will definitely help, as will some other things that, that are coming along. You know, I, I think my my biggest issue is, uh, you know, everybody agrees on what the problems are, and everybody's happy when we get a good fix like this for some of the problems. The issue is some of the things that make it into the speech that everybody knows are not real problems, and so yeah. you know, you, oh, you spend know. time talking about CR and nonsense, you know, and it's just why everybody knows this is not an issue. Because it's an election year, it's an election year, and she's got 14 people that are trying to run to the right of her. I mean, you know, and, and, and I, I don't want to get too far off into the weeds, but I mean, this week we heard some of the most over the top oh, rhetoric I have ever That's heard. I thought we were at a Klan rally or John Burt Society get together. And you hear that, like I said, on these right wing websites where they're going on and on and on about, you know, critical race theory and rejecting ARPA money and rejecting this and live, you know, they're not living in a real world. They're living in a fantasy world. It's a fantasy land that you think that that the state of Alabama can't take federal dollars, that the state of Alabama can ban, can bring school prayer back, that yeah. the state of Alabama has any ability to do any of these things that are federally, I mean, it's like teachers. They, they want to, you know, say what teachers can do and what they can't do and all this. Mm -hmm. Well, do away with those federal funds and we will have one room schoolhouses <laughs> taught by a school marm that you got to import from Georgia. Yeah. I mean, right. it's, it's insane, man. Uh, it's just it's absolutely insane. And, and let me I'd just like to point out one small thing. Voluntary prayer in school is absolutely legal and happens every single day in this country. Every day. I, I don't remember a day when I was in school that I didn't pray. Oh, God, don't let me fail this. Test. I know. I know. I, pray. I, I wouldn't have made it out of high school without prayer. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, it is political silly season. It is. We're yes. going to hear every kind of reason that Alabama stinks over the next uh, 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 five months hey. and, and how they're going to fix it single-handedly because the federal government and the, I mean, uh, one candidate attacked the legislature, attacked the governor, and acted like they weren't Republicans. I mean, I don't know what they are. They're what? And, 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 and a lot of the, what I'm hearing on what they're going to change is things they have, have absolutely, absolutely no power, power to do right, 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 in, right. in a gubernatorial position. position. All right. We're, we're going to have to let that. Well, that's never stopped them from talking. <laughs> to you, right? All right. We'll, we'll leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. My dog Jupiter is frightened when I climb too high. The owl said. Check for monsters, Daddy. I did, honey. There are no monsters. You're perfectly safe. Protect yourself and those you love. Vaccinate now. So you got caught speeding. But this time you got more than a ticket. What are you in for? Vehicular homicide. Stop speeding before speeding stops you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Uh, Susan, uh, Mo Brooks just keeps digging a hole. You know, he's part of a 
civil lawsuit mm -hmm. uh, that uh, says that he uh, incited the riot and caused, helped incite the riot, caused problems, caused distress and, 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 and damage, damages. And so he goes to court last week. He's his, he's his own representative, his own lawyer. And yeah, he goes in there. And yeah, no <laughs> doubt. <clears throat> so he goes in and tells the judge, no, 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 this was part of my official uh, duty mm -hmm. as a federal employee, a congressman. And uh, he's made that argument to the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice said, no, 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 mm -hmm. it's not. <clears throat> the judge now has to decide whether he was acting as a federal employee or was it a campaign event. But he, he revealed something in his filings and what he said to the judge that sort of lands him in trouble either way. Well, you know, he's, he's really laid out very carefully how this was his job and how all of these uh, uh, Twitter uh, tweets that he did were done by his staff. Uh, on staff, you know, on congressional computers and blah, blah, blah. But, and, and if indeed the judge finds that it was a campaign event, he's got serious <coughs> ethics problems right there for using congressional staff for an event. Something else I found interesting in there. He goes about, I don't know about each one of the five tweets, and it was all his staff. And then he gets down to the bottom and he said, you know, this was all my staff, and, you know, they did all of this without my knowledge except for maybe one. Wait a minute. You just denied all, in all, individually in all five tweets that you didn't do it and you didn't know about it until you get down here and bottom of the face. Well, <coughs> maybe, maybe one. I just, I don't know. Jossie also used his campaign staff to write the speech. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, I mean, he's he's basically set himself up in a situation where it doesn't matter which way it's ruled, he's screwed either way. <laughs> and so, yeah. uh, you know, which happens when you represent yourself. It's, I got to say, if, if it is true that he has gone about this alone uh, without legal representation of any kind, that he has not sought out any sort uh, of advice from an attorney, I, I that ought to be grounds for removing Mo from office or never voting for Mo for anything else. There are attorneys everywhere in that building. Uh, there are, I mean, you, there would be a guy that would give him free advice just to get his name out there. And would right. be, you know, fairly decent advice, probably, you know, a Harvard, an Ivy League grad, law school grad, uh, would give him advice on what to do. And that if he did actually did not seek out anybody's advice on this, I, I it's, which, I mean, judging by what he's done, it seems pretty apparent that he did not. I, this is insanity, absolute insanity, that this is the way he has set himself up for this because he's, going, he's absolutely in a position where he can't win either way. Right, right. And it, it's very interesting that he would choose to represent himself, Susan. He has never been known as a skilled attorney, but there you go. Uh, one of the things right, that so. happened this week, uh, Club for Growth, uh, Club for Growth, their their pack, has vowed, has bought, announced that they are spending 2.3 million dollars in television ads and mail blitz over the next 10 weeks to come after Katie Britt. Now, Club for Growth was the original Never Trumpers. Mm -hmm. They their owners or their main contributors are people who do business in China. And yet they're backing Mo Brooks. Now, the other candidate they back in Alabama is Barry Moore, who is the idiot in chief of Alabama politics. I mean, the poor guy has no sense whatsoever, but he got elected. But Josh, the ad that they ran against Katie Britt, number one, it's all full of lies. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing seems to be they have a problem that BCA endorsed a black woman. Yeah, well, you know, God forbid. Uh, whenever you can tie, it's it's so funny to me to listen to to groups like this who will scream and cry if you mention racism of any point at any point in an argument with them. But yet they always seem to lean on these connections to to black officials somewhere. I mean, they couldn't they can't wait to throw Barack Obama into an ad somewhere or Kamala Harris into an ad somewhere. And it's it's so weird how they always lean on just that subtle racism and sometimes very overt racism in a lot of cases. And I think this may be borderline overt racism with what they're doing with, with Katie Britt, but it's yeah. you know, it's so 
you know, God forbid you elevate a person based on their qualifications and, and ignore their skin color. You know, uh, that's just. Uh. Yeah, I mean, Susan, they make it sound like Katie Britt endorsed right. Terry Sewell for the 7th Congressional District. She was running unopposed. She's going <laughs> to win. The Business Council in Alabama, their board of directors and membership determine who they're going to endorse, right. not right. Katie Britt personally. That back in the day when Billy Canary was there, he would tell the board how to vote. It mm -hmm. doesn't work that way anymore. The president is not involved in that decision. That is strictly a board decision. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, and Terry it, Sewell, by the way, is a very competent, highly educated woman who has done a damn fine job for her congressional She has. District. Absolutely. Uh, you know, yes, she has. You'd be lucky to have Terry Sewell as your representative in Congress. Yes, she's very effective. Absolutely. Very, very effective. And, and that a business, uh, God forbid that a business outfit should yeah. realize that there are black leaders in the state that need to be endorsed, right? Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and women for, for that black matter. citizens and, and, and their constituencies in, in, a, in a highly... In a, in a district that has a high number of minority uh, folks yeah. in there. I mean, it's just, you know, come on, man. I mean, just think about it. The chairman of the Business Council of Alabama is a very accomplished black man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, give me a break. Hey, that, I mean, just real quickly, you know, Mo Brooks is always touting his endorsements. You know, he's got an endorsement from the, the president. I think the president's having... The pre former president, Donald Trump, I think he's having second thoughts. I think he's, having and he's talking about Rand Paul and, and Barry Moore and all these people that I don't think matter in Alabama. Whereas Katie Britt has got the endorsement of the Farmers Federation, mm -hmm. the Retail Association, I mean, Forestry, Automobile Association. Susan, I think those do matter. I, those absolutely do matter. I mean, those represent a large portion of voters in the state. And it's a very, there's very, very strong organizations. When they say they endorse, most of the time, everybody's going to follow their lead. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. You'll never guess what 400,000 people in the U.S. were using when they crashed their cars last year. No, not this. This. Distracted driving will kill you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. My dog Jupiter is frightened when I climb too high. The owl said. Check for monsters, Daddy. I did, honey. There are no monsters. You're perfectly safe. Protect yourself and those you love. Vaccinate now. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Uh, we don't know for sure, but we know that we, we've heard from uh, legislators that the governor and the state leadership is looking at perhaps having a special session with inside the regular session to just deal with the American Rescue Plan Act funds, ARPA, mm -hmm. by short. There's, there's around 1.5 billion, Josh, in funds. This, this discussion over prisons, whether they can spend the 400 million on prisons, is ongoing. Yeah. Uh, so we don't exactly know where that's going to end up. But I think something that's important that Governor Ivey mentioned in the State of the State Broadband, water, and sewer. Those mm -hmm. are big things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Water and sewer. Speaker of the House, Mike McCutcheon, has made the same thing. Broadband, water, and sewer. President Pro Tem of the Senate, Greg Reed, has said the same thing. Important that they spend the money wisely. Mentioned mm -hmm. broadband, water, and sewer. It is imperative. And Josh, you know why we need to work on water and sewer. And yeah. Alabama. Yeah, absolutely. You know, water and sewer uh, specifically has been a, a great source of embarrassment for, for this state of the way that we have ignored uh, the Black Belt area uh, and people who have been struggling in that in those areas with basic 
sewer services. I mean, we're, yeah. we have people in this day who are straight piping sewage out of their out of their homes because they have no real alternative because they can't afford, you know, to, to connect to a, a septic tank or, or to yeah. dispose of it properly. And it's causing disease and everything else in those areas. And we've known about it for years and, and we have been unable to do this. And so we have funds now. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a, a big priority as is broadband. We have whole sections, whole big swaths of this state that are not covered in any meaningful way uh, by broadband access of any kind, whether it be cellular or landline service. And so yeah. it, it's it, it has it's something that is very, very important to a number of very rural areas. And if we're ever going to bring this state up, you know, probably I would say broadband uh, is one of the most important things mm -hmm. in, in terms of the future of education in this state that we can do. Because if you can't connect to the internet reliably and, and do the things that you need to do on there uh, as a student now, um, you may and you're you're behind, and I mean, we got kids sitting in McDonald's parking lots using, yeah, using right. Wi-Fi, yeah. and, and it's and just a, a damn shame, really. And two of the two of our school systems just this last week went to virtual because of lack of uh, staff. So mm -hmm. what are those children doing for broadband? Because they have well, to, the school, they're sitting in, like you said, McDonald's parking lots. Yeah, sure. And, and you know, and, and one thing I do hope that they do when they when they look at all this stuff is I hope that they don't reward some of the companies uh, who have blocked off access and and prevented access from a lot of uh, from a lot of other smaller companies coming into some of these areas uh, and, and and really kind of manipulated the maps. And and we all know that that's going on. And you can ask you know Republicans and Democrats in in the state house, uh, they know it uh, very well as they started studying these maps. And I really hope that what we can do is maybe uh, reward some of these smaller companies to, to spread these lines out across the state. Well, and I agree. It, it's, that is a huge issue. Uh, we're, the legislature right now, they, they didn't get anything done basically this past week. Uh, I, I think they're, they're growing uh, very aware of the fact that the state house is unsafe because you got Omicron. It's a Patriot dish. You got Omicron just spreading like wildfire everywhere in the state. Uh, I mean, 10, no, perfect. they're perfectly fine, Bill. They're perfectly fine. Matter of fact, you know what You know what would make them safer? Is if everybody could carry a gun in there. That's what should make them that, safer. You know, get true, Omicron that's and true. a gun. That's what everybody needs to go into the state house. Well, that seems to be the big things that they're, they're gonna cover is gonna be uh, critical race theory, carrying a gun everywhere in town, uh, Granny got one under house code. I mean, except it, it for just, except for where though? Where can they not carry one? In the state house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You will get tapped real yeah. quick. You try yeah, to the cops carry with on the side of a highway. The hell with the cops on the side of a highway. But you can't carry one in the state house where they're unsafe. You know, and it's just the craziest thing to me. We're always hearing from Republicans: law and order, law and order, law and order and support the, the, the men and women in blue. But the men and women in blue are telling us that you are gonna make a Alabama citizens less safe. You're gonna make cops less safe. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make everyone less safe if you let people carry guns without a permit. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. What do they know? No, no, Nothing no, that makes any sense. Yeah. Some, somebody the other day said, you shouldn't have to pay a, a fee to exercise your uh, one of your constitutional rights, and I thought, well, this anti anti protest bill. I mean, yeah. most of the time you have to pay a fee yeah, to permit. protest. Yeah, you, know, you, yeah. Know, you, you got to get a permit. You yeah. got to get a permit to drive. Yeah, you got to get a permit for everything. Well, I, I'm not sure we have a constitutional right to drive, but we do have a constitutional right to travel unfettered, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe we shouldn't have to pay for license. Oh. Anyway, uh, the. Uh, it's just craziness. It's, it's an election season. But I want to move on here. we got about a minute and a half. Uh, the money race for governor is is looking uh, pretty interesting. You know, Governor Kay Ivey's got about $2.5 on hand. She raised 300000 Blanchard uh, is had had $5 million plus in her account. Uh, she spent a bunch of money. Right now she's spending about a million and a half on advertising. Tim James, who just got in the race, he's he's got uh, what Josh about five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, I mean, counting a loan that was in there as well, he's got I think just over a million. Um, and yeah. and so he, uh, yeah, it, it was a, a loan of five hundred thousand, I believe, from a business partner of his, and then he also got some uh, some donations from uh, from business partners and friends. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you're, you're talking about everybody's got about a million, at least over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's how much can you raise? I just, I, I just don't, I, I don't know how this works out. I mean, Linda, Lindy Blanchard has plenty of money to spend. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim James, you know, a million dollars is, is a good start. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, right now, it looks like the governor and, and Lindy Blanchard are almost neck and neck on fundraising. Money's the mother's milk of uh, politics, Josh. Uh, everybody's going to have to raise a bunch of money because there's a lot of people in the race. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if Kay Ivey really needs that much more money. Uh, you know, she can she can run the ads that she needs to. I think, you know, they're trying to knock her down. And so they're going to they're going to have to do more work than she is. Uh, so they're going to have to come up with a lot of cash. Of course, Lindy Blanchard can just pull it from the from the bank account, I guess. But uh, uh, but Tim James is going to have to get out and I guess go to the revival tents and, and you know, shake the offering plate some. Yeah, and it's going to take some fundraising and and, and not only because they're going to not try to knock her down. They've got to try to get some sort of name recognition. Right. That's their biggest problem at yep. this point. And I mean, I think p people know that Tim James is Bob James's son. Yeah, but, but he, you he, know, I, people don't remember him from not 10 really, years ago. No. Anyway, we're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.